Okay, let's discuss convolution with a delta function. So here's an example delta function. Let's put it at uh, time equals four, for example. And we're gonna convolve that with a function. And let's pick one that looks just like this, for example. And these are two time domain functions and we're gonna convolve them. Now, what's the formula for convolution? The output equals the input, let's call this one function x and this function h, and it's going to, the formula says x of tor times h of t minus tor, and you're going to integrate that over tor. So integrating that from minus infinity to infinity over tor. All right, so let me change my diagrams above in a very simple way. So this is x of t plotted against t, but we want x of tor, and of course that is the same thing, where we replace the t with the tor, and this is x of tor. Okay, so what about over here? So this is h of t, I've plotted it with respect to t, but we want uh, to be plotting things uh, with respect to tor because we're gonna integrate over tor. Another thing, one thing I might do just to make a point about it is let me change this just to alpha, for example. So let me plot h of alpha. So h of alpha is the same as h of t. If I'm plotting h of alpha with respect to alpha, I could plot h of t with respect to t. I could plot any other variable here. This is just a variable that we're plotting against. And I just want to make that point. That's why I've used alpha, just to use something completely different. It's, this is just a function. I'm trying to make the point that this is just a function. H is the function. H defines this shape. That's what H defines. And the thing in the brackets is what you're plotting it against. And I could call it alpha, I could call it tor, I could call it t. Uh, hopefully I'll uh, sort of explain why um, I'm making that point when I do this. So, okay, so we've got x of tor, that's this function here. And now I want to plot, I'm going to plot it underneath because we're mul going to multiply these two things together. So I'm going to plot h of t minus tor here. And we're plotting it with respect to tor because we want to be multiplying the same things. We need to do it for every value of tor and add them up. Okay, so what's h of t minus tor? Well, when we're plotting it with respect to tor. So what value of tor is going to correspond to h of 0? Okay, h of 0 is when up here, this is h of something, h of alpha, right? When alpha equals 0, that's h of 0. Okay, so what is what value of tor corresponds to that? Well, t minus tor equals zero. So that's a value of tor equals t. So let's pick a value of t down here, for example, just to pick one that's negative. So that is when tor equals t. It's when the thing in the brackets equals zero. So that's this point here on the h of the thing in the brackets. So that's where that part of the curve is. All right, now let's just pick, uh, let's see what happens a bit uh, in um, before that, so what's, what's, where does this part of the curve go? Let's pick one. So where does that part of the curve go? I'm trying to plot it over here. So that's when the thing in the brackets equals one. So the thing in the brackets, again, is t minus tor. So when does t minus tor equal one? What value of tor is that? Well, that's a value of tor equals t plus one. So that's tor equals uh, sorry, t minus 1. So this is here. Okay, so that's what our curve looks like because this is t minus 1. Okay, so this is our two functions we're going to multiply together and if we multiply them directly together as I've drawn them for this value of t, there's clearly no overlap because this is 0 all the way along here, so it's 0 times all of this and where this equals something other than zero, this function equals zero. So the value of t I've drawn, this times this equals zero. So the integral also equals zero. And you can pretty cle clearly easily see that all values of t, so I'm gonna plot this down here. This is the is gonna be the answer, there's gonna be yt. So for all values of t that are less than 
for, for all values of t, this value here, for all these values of t that are less than 4, this curve is going to be in this region which is multiplying by 0. Okay, so for all values of t less than 4, the answer equals 0. Okay, what happens at t equals 4? Then at t equals 4, this value of t, this will be up here. So this would be t equals 4. If, it, if t happened to equal 4, then the function is here. And then you can see there'll be a little bit of overlap because it, the infinitesimal overlap from this delta function with that part of the curve. And all this part of the curve still multiplying by 0 up here. So in our equation here, we're going to get a, the delta function at that value there, which means h of 0 is going to be the value at t equals 4. Okay, so you're going to get that function there. And then as you, hopefully, as you can see, as it moves, as we look at values of t which are bigger than 4, so as we move to the right-hand side of here, we want to know what happens here, then this part of the curve is multiplied by 0 up here, and you're just getting that part of the curve. So for a value of t bigger than 4, as it keeps getting bigger, it's getting further and further down this curve. Okay, because all of that is multiplied by 0, all of this is multiplied by 0, the only thing that's not 0 in this integral is the delta function that has the height of the h function for that difference. So this is the result. Okay, so the main message from here is, as you would expect, if the impulse happens at time 4, you would expect the impulse response to come at time 4, which indeed it does. And the main thing to remember here is, the overall picture is, if you can involve something with a delta function, then the function is moved to the place where the delta function was. So in fact, in future, if you find that something's involved with a delta function, you don't even need to do the mathematics or do all of this drawing that I've done. You can just know that the function will be shifted to the place where the delta function is.